Hello children, you are welcome to this session. Like we always do it, we shall have uh, solutions to the activity that we had last time. Then thereafter, we shall proceed with the day's, day's lesson. I want to think that you are still doing well, you are still following all the, the, the precepts of, 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 of COVID. I hope you are there. So we shall start with the activity. Solutions to the activity. Question one, name the country that colonized Uganda and the solution there is Britain. Question two, solutions are there. The question is, mention two factors which show that Uganda and Nigeria were colonized by Britain. Here we're having two countries, Uganda and Nigeria, meaning both Uganda and Nigeria were colonized by Britain. So what are the issues? There are quite many if you can recall up to five work. But in here, I've considered only two of them. One, English is their official language, same as both, in both Nigeria and Uganda. English is spoken as the official language. Then both are members of the Commonwealth Organization. Let's get number three. Number three is there. Why was Kenya called a colony? The solution to this comes from the meaning of colony. In the previous lesson, we, had, we talked about the meaning of colony. So what do we think are the solutions, or what's the possible solution here? Kenya was settled by British colonists. We said for any area to qualify as a colony, it must have been settled by the colonists. So that's the major aspect there, being settled. Though that same answer can be paraphrased in many other ways. Number four, give two advantages protectorates had over colonies in Africa. Again, this one reminds us of meaning of protectorate, also a meaning of colonies. Remember those things very well. And whenever you are about to answer a question, especially in exercises, go through the meaning of those major words. It will sink deep in your computer and be so easy for you to comprehend. So what are the considerations there? Protectorates gained independence more easily than colonies. We will also say protectorates gained independence earlier than colonies. There are way stricter, stricter, stricter laws or stricter colonial laws in colonies than protectorates. Also, you could say the colonial laws were harsh in colonies than protectorates. The road independence of protectorates was easier, was simpler, was more peaceful, unlike that of colonies. Same as colonies gained independence through bloodshed or through violence, while protectorates gained independence peacefully or through political parties. Let's proceed to the next question. What is the difference between scramble and partition of Africa? Again here, remember the salient words. We had salient words or basic words to explain or to give the meaning of scramble, to give the meaning of partition. So follow the same words to give, to have this answered well. Remember such a question can never have particular answers as grammed. You paraphrase or you write your, your answer based on how you recall the facts. So what are the facts here? Scramble was a struggle, while partition was peaceful. Here we have put the word struggle and peaceful in a different color, meaning they help us in understanding the gist of the matter. Also, scramble was disorderly, while partition was orderly. Equally, here we have disorderly and orderly, underlined and in different color. Also have scramble was a rush for colonies, while partition was sharing or was dividing of colonies. So equally, understand that. The last piece here is state two reasons for scramble and partition of Africa. Still, if you go back to our notes, we had many meanings or many reasons for scramble, then partition. There are quite many. Let's see them. I'm pouring them at once, simply because the first slide is having the, the economic factors. Remember, we subdivide with things. And here we're having what is in blue are the gists, are the aspects that make us recall, which are from the economic wing. What do you see line one? 
were seeing raw materials. Line two, we are seeing market. Line three, we are seeing investment. So please, I want to beg you that use those highlights to remind you whenever such some things occur of that kind. They also wanted land for settlement, to win fame or for prestige, then to protect their Christian missionaries. Number seven, how did explorers lead to colonization of Africa? Solution, explorers exposed Africa's natural wealth or natural resources, which attracted colonists. Same as information given by explorers encouraged colonists to come to Africa. Our last aspect here, which is number eight, is state in two ways in which industrial revolution in Europe affected Africa economically. Once again, the aspect comes of economic. Please recall what we've discussed about economic. When somebody is hanging you to economic, it means you're supposed only to create, to think about answers, solutions that are economic in nature. That that can help us get money. Equally things like employment, raw materials, tax, qualify under economic issues. So let's see the possible solutions here. It led to expression of Africa's resources. Same as Africa lost her natural resources. Same as Africa lost raw materials. Same as Africa's raw materials were taken to Europe. Let's see other solutions led to the coming of European traders to Africa. The aspect of trade in here, it connotes, it connotes economic. So it's right, we're right to say it led to the coming of European traders to Africa. Led to establishment of processing industries. Industrial issues are also economic in nature. So don't hesitate, write something about industry when an economic question is in place. Africa created an area for European investment. And the last issue here is Africa created the market for European goods. So children, those were the solutions for the, the last activity. I hope you have tried to gauge and weigh yourself very well. You are even free to write, write the word correction somewhere. You are even free to this append a tick where you feel is right and we shall kick on from there. So today we want to attack some other subtopic still under the same topic. And in this subtopic, we're starting it with a different style. Here we go. Somebody is swinging, you man stop and they see you. I hope you have seen the man. You must have come across that man either by name or by that picture. I know. Whom do you think that man is? And what do you think we're going to address? Let me add something. Perhaps you're right or wrong. I've added that one. It is Otto von Bismarck. Otto von Bismarck. I want to add some other words that can perhaps propel you towards reasoning right about the same man. The words are Germany. The other word is Berlin. The other word is the person's name Otto von Bismarck. And the last word here is conference. So I know someone who has come across that man or someone who has come across one of those words, you are now having it right. You are now thinking right about that man. What are we intending to talk about in reference to that man? Let's carry on. The Berlin Conference of 1884-1885. That's our subtopic for today. And we want to comprehend this by still a continued use of the words that we saw there. Word one is Otto von Bismarck, who is actually someone's name. Word two is Berlin, and we are referring to a place, in particular, the city of Germany, which is Berlin. Then also another word is Berlin Conference. We want to have a play, a, a, a joke with these words till we comprehend the gist. Our first arrow here, there is a double arrow. We're having Otto von Bismarck linked to Berlin. Remember I said we're referring to the Berlin Conference. I mean the Berlin, Berlin as a city. Another arrow here is that arrow there. We're having Otto von Bismarck linked to Berlin Conference. The other arrow here is that one. Where Berlin, the place, is linked to Berlin Conference. 
So we want to have a play and a joke in there. For instance, where was the Berlin conference organized? It was organized in Berlin. And we have said earlier on that Berlin was the city of Germany. Who organized the Berlin conference? We are seeing that also here. That Otto von Bismarck organized the Berlin conference. So I hope by now we have those things at our fingertips. And we can put this in words or in lines or sentences by having something here. And that is, it was organized by Otto von Bismarck, the Chancellor of Germany, at that time. Meaning, Otto von Bismarck was the Chancellor of Germany at that time. Which time are we talking about? 1884-1885. Second line. It was organized in Berlin, the capital city of Germany, or one of the cities of Germany. So let's remember that that's our gist that we want to comprehend very well. The question is now a looming in you. Why did this man, Otto von Bismarck, call for this conference? Why was this conference organized? Which groups of people attended this conference? Perhaps those could be questions looming in your minds. They shouldn't, shouldn't loom so, so high. Let's carry on and see. Why did Otto von Bismarck call for the Berlin Conference? Takes us back to the title, title, which is Reasons for Organizing the Berlin Conference. So why was the Berlin Conference organized? We have reasons there why it was organized, and we can really go through them one at a time. One is to end the scramble for colonies. Like we said, to scramble is to struggle for, is a disorderly way of getting something, is a scaffold through which something is God. So one of the reasons was to end the scramble for colonies in Africa. You will recall that these same Europeans had earlier on called Africa a dark continent. And now we see people call themselves organized and civilized, struggling and merely fighting over colonies in Africa. What they had earlier on called, called uh, dark continent. So one of the issues was to end the scramble for colonies in Africa. Second aspect is to end war or to avert war in Africa over colonies to control outbreak of war over colonies in Africa. It is true that war was imminent in Africa if it wasn't for the Berlin Conference. Each country, Europe, Germany, they were each struggling to, uh, not Europe actually, sorry, uh, Britain, France, Germany, each was struggling as hard as possible to take the biggest share of what they referred to as a dark continent, of a place that they uh, neglected so much and called all sorts of names. So it's true that the Berlin Conference was intended to control outbreak of war here in Africa. Next is to set rules and guidelines for colonial acquisition. It was true that every country, if given a chance, would take the whole of Africa for herself. So they had to set guidelines, they had to set rules, they had to set laws precepts for colonial acquisition here in Africa. Also, don't forget that to divide up Africa or to share Africa among European countries or European powers. Often we shall be referred to these countries as powers because not all European countries were called, only those European countries that one, had interest in colonies in Africa and two were super powers were called to that conference. Let's carry on and see the effects or outcomes of the conference. There are quite many outcomes of the conference, quite many of them, and we want to see some of them. Like the question goes, how did the Berlin Conference affect Africa? How did the Berlin Conference affect Africa? One, Africa was partitioned or shared among European superpowers. So one of the effects, one of the outcomes is Africa was partitioned and we said the partition was sharing or dividing. So Africa was divided among African, among, among European powers. And second aspect here is, it led to demarcation of Africa or 
countries of Africa were fixed. Remember, we never had these uh, demarcations in Africa like they are today. We were free, we were in kingdoms. But the coming of the, the, the one of the concerns, the Bani Conference, was, was to fix countries in Africa or demarcating Africa. It also led to loss of independence. Our area, we were self governed. We knew how to do our things, we knew how to play our games. But when this people here came, they came with their own law that we are calling foreign laws or colonial laws. They came with their own economic systems that we're not, were not used to. So we lost our independence in all aspects. We lost the economic independence, we lost political independence, or the independence was gone. It led to loss of land among Africans. Look at these children. Tribes of the same origin and in the same geographical location were separated. It's true that as they were demarcating, some tribes were found in two countries, yet in two different uh, gov governments, yet they, could not, they, yet they were the same. They were the same in origin. They were also the same by geographical location prior to the coming of the whites. For instance, the, the, the Samia. The Samia are in Kenya, they're also in, in Uganda. So we have the same Samia of Kenya and the same Samia of Kenya, of, of Uganda and Kenya. So it was brought by these whites here. Look at the Maasai. We have the Maasai of Tanzania, of Tanzania and the Maasai of Kenya. All these were brought by the same, same people. So children, those are some of the effects, some of the outcomes of that aspect. Controlled European countries to fight from fighting for colonies in Africa. That's also right. So let's see our last issue here is a sketch map of Africa showing showing spheres of influence. We talked about spheres of influence. By using the word spheres of influence to dodge the word protectorate, to dodge the word colony. If I was, if I was to say a sketch map of Africa showing colonies, some of the areas as well protectorate could be captured. So we're using that word there. Where's the map? Here's the map. Look at that map very well. We're having a key there. In the key we have United Kingdom, that's Britain. Which color are we seeing for Britain? Yellow is indicated for Britain. So the countries in yellow, where you're seeing the cursor there, those countries are recognized by Britain. Also look at France. The countries you're seeing dark here, that's those were areas of France. Look at Germany. Why you're seeing blue is German. No, it's gray, no brown. Why we're seeing brown, look at the cursor here, brown. Look at this area here, brown. Look at this area here, brown. Also look at this one, it's brown. So that is that was Germany. Italy. Italy is here. We are seeing that purple there is Italy. Another one here, Italy is Italy, and Somalia here is also Italy. I want to take you to Portugal. Portugal is here. I hope we are seeing blue. We are also seeing blue there. It's also, it is also Portugal. Now, there is the word there, independent. I hope you have seen the word independent. The word independent, the word independent is there and it's, 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 it's connoted with the color green. The word independent is connected with the color green and we can see, we can see Ethiopia, we can also see Liberia over there. We have seen Ethiopia, we also seen Liberia over there with the word independent. What comes in your mind when you see that? Let me perhaps use a question. The question is, what does light green mean on the map? Light green, if you can recall, means countries in Africa, countries of Africa that were never colonized. Those countries never tested the rule of the white man. They remained independent. So we are proud of those countries. They make us so proud. How I wish all of us refused to accept this post rule. How, how perhaps I wish we fought so hard and this poor never ruled us. Maybe it would have been so good. Let's carry on and we see our last aspect here. Our last thing is the word acquire. Next is equal or same as. Next word is 
Which one is that? It's gate. So the word acquire in this talk is the same as gate. So Europeans got colonies here, or they acquired colonies here. They only forgot that what they seem to be acquiring in the talk that was outside Africa in Berlin, this area also had people. Our descendants, our, our, our great grandparents were here. So they thought they were just coming to get something that's free of charge. But we were here. Therefore, we received them with different meanings, with different feelings. So let's see how they finally managed to acquire or to get colonies. One, aspect one is through signing treaties or through signing agreements, then through using collaborators, through using missionary work, using force for violence, then using trading companies. I can conclude this with the question, right two ways, through which, right two ways, through which European countries got colonies in Africa. Right two ways, through which European countries got colonies here in Africa. So with that, it can be answered following that. However, do not forget what we have talked about. We have said, when the whites came here, they found our people here. How do you think our people received them? Two things. Some accepted their rule, others refused their rule. Those who refused their rule, we shall call them resistors in the next talk. And those who accept their rule, we shall call them collaborators in the next talk. So I want to thank you for being good attendants of this lesson. Remember to go through the work very well. Let's meet when we're supposed to meet. Bye. We love you so much. Thank <laughs> you.